everyone. This is Chris from Wagmore Pet Boutique and Bakery. Thanks for joining us again. Today's video, we are going to be making doggy Cinnabons. Yes, Cinnabons for dogs. So let's get started. First, you'll need flour. We're going to start with two cups that are required, a half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of cinnamon, one quarter cup of coconut oil, and finally one egg. Here are all the tools, baking tools, that you'll need for today. Your mixing bowl, half a cup, quarter cup, tablespoon, and your rolling pin, and your board for rolling. Our first step is to grab your flour, fill up your measuring cup to two cups, and we'll put that in the bowl. Now we're going to add our two tablespoons of cinnamon. I we'll mix in this ground cinnamon quick. It'll make it easier before we mix in all our liquids. We'll set the bowl aside for now. We'll start out with our milk. I'm using a fat-free milk. Let's put this bowl to the side. We're going to grab a small secondary bowl. We're going to put all our liquids in here together, mix it at once, and then we'll pour it into the big bowl with our flour and cinnamon. First we'll put in our half a cup of milk. And I'll grab a spoon and scoop in a quarter cup of the coconut oil. And I find it best to heat it up in the microwave for a few seconds. It'll become more liquidy and easy to mix and it won't be as lumpy in the batter. So let's go warm it up. I'm back with the coconut oil. I did about 30 seconds in the microwave. Just be careful of not spilling. And we're ready to mix everything in together. Let me grab my spoon. I would say a good 15 to 20 seconds of mixing. Get the yolk all broken up and mixed in. And it'll look like almost like a egg mix ready for an omelet. Pour everything into the flour and, and cinnamon. And we'll speed it up a little. And Let's get rolling. We are rolled out. Remember, flour is your friend. Extra flour on the board, and I sprinkle and put some flour on my rolling pin before we get started. It just makes life so much easier without having to pause and taking off bits of batter and it's easier to clean too when you're all done. Now that we have our flour all rolled out, I would say it is about to a quarter inch of thickness. And we are going to do a few roll-ups with it and then do our cuts in the middle for our Cinnabon look. You can start from either end and just start rolling it up or you can start from the other way and roll down. We're going to cut off the ends. And we'll use these again when we re-roll the rest of our batter. I'm going to do my cuts approximately three quarters of an inch to an inch. We don't want to go too thick and that way it'll take longer to, to bake and cook them. They cut pretty easy. Let's see how many we can get out of a roll.
I have my baking tray ready with parchment paper. It makes life so much easier for when baking and taking the cookies off when they're done so nothing sticks to the pan. We're going to grab a Cinnabon at a time. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our finger or our thumb from the bottom and just poke it up a little. So it gives it that 3D effect like an actual Cinnabon. On the two ends of the batter, I rolled it back up, I re-rolled it, and I was able to get a four more smaller ones compared to the first roll. So they're starting to look like Cinnabons. Optional, you can sprinkle some cinnamon on it before we put it in the oven. And we are all set for the oven. Oven's preheated to 350. Let's get these baked. It's been 20 minutes. They've been cooling off. Let's check them out. These come out really nice. They are all ready to be decorated. All right, now that they're all done and ready and hardened up, and let's get these guys decorated. We are back at our prepping table. We're gonna leave them right on the same tray and make it easy. For the frosting on the Cinnabons, we used a powdered yogurt and we add water. For the frosting at home, I would recommend uh, cornstarch. You're going to need one to two tablespoons, and you're going to need one to two teaspoons of either milk or water. Start with one teaspoon with either milk or water because you don't want it too runny, and it's going to be a lot more difficult to decorate your Cinnabons. So I have my Cinnabon frosting all set. I'm using, again, the powdered yogurt. You want almost like a frosting like so you can drizzle it with a spoon right over the cinnabons and for our do-it-yourselfers at home again two to three tablespoons of cornstarch and then one to two teaspoons of milk or water can be applied today i will be using a frosting bag with a tip picked out for my Cinnabons, and I'm gonna line the cup. You can use pretty much anything you find in your kitchen, a coffee mug, paper cup, glass cup, and I'm gonna line it with my frosting bag. Easier to pour everything in. Again, depending on the consistency of your frosting batter, it's not going to look exactly like mine. It could be a little bit more runny, it could be thicker, but it's still going to look like a Cinnabon to drizzle over. Just going back and forth. to the next one. I hope your pups are getting excited. We are almost near completion. We just finished our frosting, our doggy Cinnabons. Um, again, the tray is going to be pretty messy, but as to be expected with the frosting, we'll let these dry. With the yogurt powder frosting that we use at the bakery, it takes about 24 hours for the frosting to dry, but with the cornstarch for Austin for the Cinnabons. It should only take a few hours. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope your four-legged ones enjoy them. And for the most important part, the test.